everyone, thanks for watching. Today I will show you how to do a residual land value calculation uh, using a real estate financial model in Excel. Now this is one method for arriving at residual land value. Uh, there's other methods, but this is, this is the way that essentially if you have a, a real estate financial model and it has land as an input, you can use this method. So it's pretty cool. Um, why would you do this? Well, uh, if you're a developer, be it a, a land developer, you're developing single family lots, maybe you're a builder, maybe you're a, a, a multifamily a apartment developer or an office developer, it doesn't matter, but you're developing real estate and you have opportunities to purchase land that you're going to be built, where you're going to be building your, your project. And oftentimes you approach a land seller uh, and that land seller doesn't even necessarily consider themselves a seller. They don't know what their land's worth or maybe they they have a, a number in mind but they don't want to tell you and you need to approach them with, with a number. Uh, in I, I started my career in land brokerage and I'm the first to tell you there aren't great comps for land. There are comps but uh, every piece of land is a little different not just from location but the, best, the highest and best use, a lot has to do with frontage, a lot has to do with soil type, and a whole host of, of things, right? And, and so because of that, it's just, it's difficult to value land. But you need to be able to give a number to a prospective land seller uh, so that you can arrive at a deal. And this is one method for coming up with what is, you know, what, what, what that land is worth to you. So the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to open up your real estate model that you'll be doing this calculation in. Uh, today I'll be using my residential land development model. Uh, it's found on our website here, adventuresincre.com. I'll also post uh, down below a link to the model. Uh, you can find it, if you just scroll down from the home page, it's a little ways, you'll see this library of Excel real estate models. Click download a model and this will open up the library where you can uh, scroll down here and sort by model type. I'm going to choose land development, sorts. Here's our residential land development pro forma. Open that up. And on this page here, uh, you'll be able to it'll walk you through how to use the model and, and download the model, etc. So with the model open, uh, download it, open it up. Uh, you'll notice as with all, all models, uh, Blue fonted cells are input cells. Black fonted cells are output cells. In this case, these tan boxes summarize the returns. And so the first step is you will have done some analysis on the land and you'll know how many, so let's take in this case a residential land developer, a developer who develops lots to sell to home builders or builder teams. Uh, and so you as a land developer will know on this particular piece of land, uh, let's say it's 20 acres and I think I can put 70 lots on this. Uh, my closing costs on the purchase of the land will be about 2% of the value of the land. Uh, my due diligence period will be about three months. I'm going to spend about 2.5% of the land purchase price on uh, due diligence. And my earnest money will be about 5% of the land purchase. And then in terms of my entitlement assumptions, right, I'm going to drop in, in this case I just have a percentage of the land purchase which is imprecise imprecise I recognize, but you'll drop in what your architecture and engineering is, uh, what your consulting fees are, etc. Right? So you, you'll know each of your assumptions and depending on the model you're using, uh, there might be more or more assumptions or less assumptions that you drop in. Again, this is a back of the envelope model. So there are there are few inputs here, but you might have a more comprehensive model where there are be more there will be more inputs. The important thing is to leave, just ignore that land purchase uh, for now. So we continue, uh, I assume construction length of six months. Each one of my, my single family lots are going to cost 25,000 to build. Uh, and once the project is complete or the construction is complete, the absorption period will be about six months to sell all the lots. I'm gonna sell the finished lots for 75,000 a piece and I'll, I'll spend about 4% per lot, 4% of the 75,000 per lot in closing costs. Also, I'll be pulling out an acquisition development loan, which uh, will be 65% of the total project cost. Uh, and the interest rate on that will be 5%, right? So 
have my inputs dropped in everything but land purchase. So here comes the trick to calculating now residual land value. Here's what I know. Internally, uh, my land development company, and this is uh, imaginary, I don't have a land development company, but you know, if I were doing this analysis, my land development company has a uh, profit hurdle or, or a, a profit target of a three multiple, meaning I want my equity to grow by three times on this project. Why? Well, I know that the project is going to last 30 months, and so we want to get about uh, you know a, a one times multiple for every 10 months that our equity is out there. Maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. It doesn't matter. We have a target. Okay. You can do the same thing. You could do an IRR target. Maybe you have a net profit target. Uh, you could drop in your own metrics. Uh, maybe it's profit margin, a percentage, uh, whatever it may be, right? So you'll have that metric, and that that is the metric you'll be solving for. And we're going to use Excel's goal seek function to arrive at that target. So again, I have a, th a three multiple target. So what I'm gonna, going to do is I'm going to go up here to the, the Excel ribbons and I'll choose data. Then over here under forecast, I'm going to find what if analysis. Click that and you'll find goal seek. Okay, so come down here. And what we're doing here is we're going to uh, solve for a value by changing another value. And in this case, it's pretty simple, right? We're going to solve for the equity multiple by changing the land purchase price. And so the very top set cell, click here. I'm going to set this cell equal to three by changing this cell. Right? Hit OK. And Excel is just going to iterate through over and over again. What it's going to be doing is it's going to be changing this cell over and over. And you'll see how many times until it arrived at the value that, that this land amount would need to be in order for our equity multiple to be equal to three. And it's that simple. Uh, just a simple, quick, and easy way to uh, calculate residual land value. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, um, and thanks for your time.